All right. And I have a Praise the Lord. We are alive. We are alive. So it's a lot of stuff going on. Thank you, Lord. I got my uh, Hakuna Matata shirt tonight just to remind y'all of the simplicity of Lion King. No worries for the rest of your days. Amen? Hallelujah. Right. You got to remember what Mufasa said to his son Simba. He said, remember who you are. That's <laughs> right? right. Yep. I'm telling you, mm, Disney can preach. <laughs> Lord. Um, anyways, uh, thank you guys for joining us online tonight. Welcome everyone to Vision Church of Lockhart. I am Pastor Kyle, the associate pastor here and the English pastor. And uh, man, we are excited about tonight's lesson. Uh, we're in a study guide on the new you and the Holy Spirit. And we have been tremendously blessed. We're actually nearing the end here. We've got three lessons left, including tonight. And then uh, October 30th, which is a Wednesday night, um, the night before Halloween, uh, we're going to be going out. Praise the Lord, door to door, praying for people. So, thank you, Jesus. We get to shine our light. But anyways, we are in lesson 14 tonight on uh, build yourself up. Build yourself up. I'm telling you all, the world is always trying to tear you down all the time. And it especially happens through social media. And uh, that's, the, you know, that's why we've got to be aware of who our friends are on social media and things like that. And what we're allowing ourselves to, you know, hear, listen to, to see. Uh, because that we don't want to allow negative things to have direct access to our heart. Amen. So we've, we've got to, um, we've got to, in a sense, not, you know, not put our head in the dirt or anything like that. But... We do need to sanctify ourselves, hallelujah, set ourselves apart, and, uh, and build ourselves up. Amen? Okay, let's pray and we'll jump into tonight's lesson. Father God, thank you for your word, Lord. Uh, we are excited about your word, God. We are ecstatic about your word, Father, because your words, they are spirit and they are life to us. So we just thank you that tonight, God, we're going to be built up. We're going to be encouraged. We're going to be strengthened. We're going to be comforted. We're going to be instructed. And we thank you, Father God, that your word brings life to us, and we receive it, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the primary person, uh, purpose of speaking in tongues is to promote personal spiritual growth. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and 4 says, For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. How many of y'all need some edification sometimes, right? Come on, we need some building up sometimes, amen? Um, I don't care how, you know, mighty in faith you are. You, we all need building up, amen? You're, you're, not, um, you're not immune to the trials and tests. That we're going to face in this life. So when you speak in tongues, you're building yourself up spiritually. You also keep yourself in the love of God. And in Jude 20 through 21, it says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. All right, so God's love for you never changes. That's a... That's an awesome truth, but your experience of it does. Speaking in tongues helps you fulfill your responsibility to keep yourself aware of and enjoying God's unfailing love. If I can have someone um, turn to Romans 5.5, 5. can someone turn to Romans 5.5? 5. And when you get there, go ahead and, and read that out loud for us. Romans 5.5. 5. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I read my, my Bible on my phone, too, usually. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Amen. The Holy Spirit who has given to us, it says that the love of God has been shed abroad or poured out in our hearts. Amen. So, man, if we, if we feel like, God, you're so distant from me. God, you're so far from me. Begin to pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit was given to you to make God's love known to you. Amen? So just because you don't feel like God's love, you doesn't mean he doesn't love you. 
Praise the Lord. So, speaking in tongues produces rest and spiritual refreshment. In Isaiah 28, 11 through 12, it says, For with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. That's, that word sounds good, doesn't it? Refreshing. Praise the Lord. What, what do y'all think of? When I say the word refreshing, I want y'all to just go ahead and answer this. When I say the word refreshing, what do y'all think of? Water. <laughs> water? Like what, like, what do you, like what kind of water? Um, cool water. Just like running or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, like a, like a river? Or... Yeah. Okay. Sorry. My mom was the exact same way when, when my mom, when she wasn't even a Christian, and she was, you know, dealing with a lot of torment and unrest and stuff, you know, and um, unhappiness, and she said that to soothe herself, that she would enjoy being around rivers and just listening to the water. Yeah. Because I, I believe it's a scripture... Um, that says, you know, the, the, the voice of the Lord is, is like the, the rushing of many waters. And uh, so it's just God's creation. Amen. What else? What, what do y'all think of when I say the word refreshing? Waterfall. Waterfall? Yeah. Why you water running? Yeah. I've been to Yosemite in California. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Seeing the waterfall over there. Some of y'all are probably jealous, huh? Y'all should go there. I should visit Yosemite, California. It's amazing. Anybody else? When I think refreshing, and anybody who travels with me, you know, to like a hotel or something knows this, right, Brother Leon? I think of a hot tub. Praise the Lord. Every time I go on the men's trip to Colorado, you know, I'm always in the hot tub at the hotels. And I'm by myself. None of, nobody else wants to go with me. But that's what I, when I think of refreshing, I think of a hot tub, just relaxing. I mean, you know, just the steam and just like, oh, praise the Lord. And then just clear your mind and just relax there. Um, we actually, uh, you know, pastors and I, we went to the minister's conference last week. And they had a hot tub outside. And uh, it was pretty cold outside. You know, it was like in the 40s and 50s. I did not care. I went in the hot tub outside. And it felt amazing until I got out of the hot tub. And it was like instantly, you know, frozen. But, uh, man, that hot tub was awesome with the bubbles and everything. It's just refreshing. I'm telling you guys. But, anyways, I'm telling you all that the Holy Spirit, he wants to refresh your heart. Amen. And um, some of us need that. Some of us need a, a reset button. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit will refresh your heart. And he will replenish your energy. But if you're just always going, 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 your mind's not on the Lord. You're never giving God any time. You're never, I mean... You're not going to be refreshed. Amen. You, you've got to give God time. Praise the Lord. you got to look to him. So uh, your spirit is the part of you where God lives. It is brand new, pure, righteous, and holy. When you pray in tongues, you release into your soul and body the rest and refreshment that is already in your spirit. Personally, I encourage myself by speaking in tongues. Whenever I feel tired or discouraged, I pray in the spirit until rest and refreshment come. Despite negative circumstances and emotions, I will exercise my faith to pray in tongues until I'm aware of and enjoying God's love again. Really puts things in perspective for you, too. And you're like, hmm, maybe what I'm feeling or going through right now is not that big of a deal as I'm making it. Right? So whether it's kids are acting up, grandkids acting up, problem with coworkers at work or a boss at work, um, Praise the Lord. Pray in tongues. <laughs> and start enjoying God's love again, because life's too short to be worrying about stuff you can't change. Once you realize you can pray in the Spirit anytime you choose, you have no excuse to ever be depressed again. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you pray in tongues, your natural mind does not understand. In 1 Corinthians 14, 14, it says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So unless there's interpretation, uh, your intellect does not know what your spirit is praying. Your spirit has the mind of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Say it with me. I have, I have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Isn't that amazing to think of? Jesus. Usually, we, so many Christians think of God as, Oh, he's this man up there, and we're just down here, and we're just crawling, scraping our way along, just trying to get by the grace of God, and 
perhaps God will just drop a little morsel of bread for me, you know, a little more, a little blessing. And that's how most Christians operate. And it's like, no, we're children of God. Praise the Lord to go up in the fridge. Get, get some wisdom, get some joy, get some peace in your life. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. You have the mind of Christ. And what I said earlier about that confidence, right? And your sonship in Christ. Praise the Lord. So you have the mind of Christ. And we need to be tapping into the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you all know that in the mind of Christ, uh, where, where was Jesus' mind always, always on? It was always on the Father, right? When he walked the earth, he, he was always thinking about the Father. The Father says this, the Father does that. The, the Father's will. What does the right. Father want? His mind wasn't on himself and his needs and his desires. So you have the mind of Christ, so you have the ability to think um, like Jesus did, spiritually speaking, which just, you know, having your mind on good things. You know, as Philippians says, keeping your mind stayed on things that are pure, right? You have that ability, but... You have to tap into uh, into your spirit, man, on the inside. You have to tap into that, and you do that by praying in tongues. So your spirit knows all things. In 1 John 2, 20, it says, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Some of you are like, I don't know everything. You may not, but the one in you does. And if you begin to tap into the Holy Spirit inside of you and begin to pray in tongues, I'll tell you, he will manifest himself and make his wisdom known to you. Praise the Lord. He will give you direction and guidance. He'll show you the way. And you'll be like, I know. Sometimes I just say it by faith. When I don't know what the answer is or I don't know what to do, thank you, Lord, that you're showing me what to do. I thank you that because of your wisdom, I know what to do. I'll just say it by faith. You know, in my mind, I'm like, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> but in my heart, I believe. Amen. I believe. Faith comes from the heart. And that's what you have to do. You have to believe in God and say, God, you know, in my mind, I don't know, but I know who does know. And he lives in me and he's going to show me. So I know all things. Why? Because his word says I know all things. Praise the Lord. That's how we begin to live a spiritual life in the Holy Spirit. In Colossians 3.10, uh, it says here, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So, therefore, your spirit always knows how to pray perfectly for situations yourself and for others. There is a big difference between praying from your spirit and praying from your mind. Your natural mind typically has incomplete information. It lacks full knowledge of God's word, the situation, and the people that are involved. Just like Paul said, right? I know in part. Amen? A lot we don't know. So, therefore, you cannot pray from your intellect with completeness and 100% accuracy. However, since your born-again spirit knows all things, it is impossible to pray in tongues without praying God's perfect will. At times, the Holy Spirit may intercede for someone else through you as you pray in tongues. In Romans 8, 26, this is likewise the Spirit also helps our infirmities, which is another way of saying our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So this is especially helpful when your mind is not sure how to pray for a specific person or situation. How I many of y'all been there before? You're like, oh, this, this person's so messed up. I don't even know how to pray for them. I don't even know where to start. Amen? Or maybe you're messed up. You're like, I am so messed up. I don't even know how to pray for myself. And uh, man, I'll tell you, that's when you have the Holy Spirit to intercede for you and to pray in tongues, the perfect uh, will of God, to pray it out and just rest in your heart knowing, okay, I know I didn't understand what I was praying, but I know by faith that I'm praying the perfect will of God because God's word says I am. Amen? So uh, as we speak in tongues, you are speaking the hidden wisdom of God. Paul received the revelation for the messages he preached through speaking in tongues. In 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 7, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Also in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, it says, For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. So as Paul spoke God's mysteries in tongues, uh, he built himself up spiritually 
and revelation knowledge came. So as you pray in tongues, you will be built up spiritually as revelation knowledge comes to you too. Because what you're doing is you are shifting the spiritual atmosphere around you. And I'm here to tell you that this world that we live in, what we feel and what we see is not all that there is. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 that faith which we cannot see pray the world which we can see. I'm here to tell you there's a spiritual realm and you need to tap into that spiritual realm and affect change. Because spiritual things affect this physical, natural world. Amen. And you need to start, instead of um, the, allowing the enemy to always be one step ahead of you by looking to your natural mind, you need to start operating in the wisdom of God, and you need to start thwarting the plans of the enemy and getting ahead of him, amen, yes. and getting Satan so turned around that he doesn't know which way is up or down, by you tapping into the spiritual realm and you praying in tongues. Hallelujah. Because I'll tell you, Jesus had Satan twirled around his finger. Satan didn't know what to do. <laughs> Amen. I mean, Satan thought, that, yes, I defeated Jesus. And little did he know, three days later, it was all God's plan. Satan, I mean, Satan was just, I'm sure he just felt like an idiot. <laughs> you know? Finally, I destroyed the Son of God. And then here come all these born-again Christians after Jesus rose from the dead. All these born again Christians say it's like, what did I do? I killed one and I created many more little Christs in the earth. Amen. Amen. So I'm telling you, there's a spiritual world. Tap into it, brothers and sisters. Tap into it and uh, begin to shift things in your life that way. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to end now. But um, if you're watching this, you have any questions, any comments, feel free to comment below or to message the church and we will get back to you. God bless.